Kia ora team, my name is Ben and today we're going to go through the protocol for testing a one rep max. So step one, what we need to do is get our client warm. So starting with a, a general warm up, whether that be jogging, cycling, rowing, skipping, nothing that's going to fatigue them, but just something that generally warms up their body. Then we're going to have to move into a more specific warm up. So we may do some dynamic stretches or we may move just into the movement pattern we're about to test, but start with very light weights. So we can standardize all the test procedures to make sure when we repeat the test that it's valid and reliable. So what range of motion we want the bar to go, where we want them to hold the bar, the position on the bench, all these things we need to standardize. And in our specific warm-up, we can practice these things. So we want to complete 10 reps, maybe just with the bar, and then we want to rest a good two minutes. So in this time, it's a good time to ask them what they think their one rep max is going to be, because that's what is going to decide how much weight we put on the bar each time. If they don't know, we can always ask them what they can do 10 reps to fatigue in, or five reps to fatigue in. Then you can go to a one rep max calculator online, or a predicted one rep max table, and then this will give you, if they can do 10 reps at this weight, they'll give a predicted one rep max for your client. That way we know what increments to lift the weight up in. So next, we wanna to jump to about 50 or 60% of their predicted one rep max, and do maybe four reps. Give them another two minutes rest, then we can jump to about 80% of their predicted one rep max, and then get them to do one rep. Now this should bring us to their one rep max attempt. So load up whatever their predicted one rep max is and give it a go. From here we can jump up in small increments or go down in small increments to find their exact one rep max. The goal is we don't want to hit that one rep max on our first set because they won't be properly warmed up but we wouldn't want to take more than 10 sets to get there because they're going to be fatigued and that's going to limit their one rep max. So the goal is to hit the one rep max between four and ten sets. The other thing to think about is where are you going to stand for safety? You want to make sure each rep is a full rep, but also you want to be ready to spot the person if they need your help. How do we know if someone is close to their one rep max? So if you remember the force velocity relationship, when a maximal contraction occurs, if the speed of that contraction is fast, then we know it's not near their maximum force production. Because for a fast contraction to occur, a lot of the myosin heads have to detach to reach forward to contract again. So the faster we're going, the more myosin heads aren't contracting. The slower the contraction, we know most of the myosin heads will be attached and pulling at any one time. So if you see the bar moving fast, you know it's not close to their one rep max yet. So if a true one rep max, the bar will be moving very slowly. So those are our key points for finding a one rep max. Get into it.